If you're a foreign engineer outside of the United States, but you want to get a license in the US and become a licensed professional engineer, you're in the right place. I have with me today as a guest on our show, Oscar Gutierrez, and Oscar is from Venezuela, but he's come to the US and he's been approved to sit for his FE exam en route to his PE exam and to achieving his license. And what he's gonna do in this video is walk us through the specific steps that you need to take to get your education outside of the US approved here by the NCES and what steps you need to take in this process. This episode of Pass the PE Exam is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest on to pass the PE exam today. Um, our guest is Oscar Gutierrez. He's an engineer. Oscar, welcome to pass the PE exam. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Oscar, for our listeners, can you just give them your background? Where are you from? What kind of engineering do you practice? Sure. Um, I am from Venezuela. I have five years working like a structural engineer for uh, different structural engineering firms through Florida, New York, and New Jersey. Um, right now, I'm working for a high reputation company, Osborne Engineering. They are in the market since 1812. Um, they uh, create the structural design uh, of the Yankee Stadium in the first phase and most of the stadium in the country. Um, I'm working like a structural engineer there right now. And also I help people to find uh, jobs like uh, immigrant engineers to find their jobs or the first job and also make their credential evaluations. That's great. And so this channel past the PE exam is for engineers that are trying to get their PE license. And right. we get a lot of questions from foreign engineers that want to get licensed in the United States, but they're not sure of the process. They're not sure if it's feasible. They went to a school that isn't ABET accredited. It's not a U.S. college or university. And you've been down that road. So first thing, how do you see if the school that you went to and your education is going to be accepted by NCWS, which is the the organization that oversees the FE and the PE exams? Okay, so first step, you need to check the website AVET dot org so check if your school is there you don't need to make their credential evaluation but if your school and not only your school also your career because they they accredit the careers not not the entire school so if your career is not there you need to make your credential evaluation through the ncwes so okay. So first step is, so if you went to school in a foreign country, you're thinking about getting your engineering license in the U.S., go to abet.org, A-B-E-T.org, and see if your school is listed on their website That's as an correct. ABET accredited school. If it is, then your school and education will be accepted in the U.S. towards licensure. If it's not, then you need to take the step that Oscar is going to explain, trying to um, receive an equivalency for your school. That's correct. So how do you do that, Oscar, if it's not approved? Okay. Take the documents from the university. The documents are, number one, diploma. Number two, transcript grades. Number three, course description. Only these three documents. After that, you need to create an account through the NCEES. Uh, you need to add your education, like your university. When you attend this the school, you know, like since this day to this date, and after that, the website will give you a transcript request form. A transcript request form is a 
page where you need to fill some information, send this to the university, and the university need to sign and seal. Very important. Sometimes the NCES website shows like the official university need to send the transcript, all these documents, directly to the NCES. But the truth is, most of the university, or foreign university, they don't do that. So the way that your relative can send this envelope, I will talk about this a little bit uh, later, is if you have this transcript request form, sign and seal from the university inside the envelope. So you will need diploma, English transcript grades, and native two, and course description, plus the transcript request form from NCEES. So you can get the form and then your family member can go to the school, get the information, put it in an envelope and send it in? That's correct. Okay, that's great. Okay, so if you get all that stuff, you create an account, you submit it to NCEES, what happens next? Okay, so first you need to translate these documents to English, of course. In the envelope, you need to have the diploma in native language plus English language. Grades in native language plus English language and the transcript request form signed and sealed by, from the university. All these documents should be copied, not the original ones. Send this envelope from your country to NCEES directly. And the course description, you need to create a resume because the course description is a book with 350 pages, it's too much. And they allow you to create a resume of this book. They just need to know the name of the course, how many credit units this course took, and also the topics that you saw in this course. After that, you translate the course description resume only, and you submit this to the NCES uh, email, which is help at ncees.org. And they'll connect so send, that to your account? Yeah, they'll you know send like... You. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is my name. This is my NCEES credential ID. You need to provide that. And here I am attaching my course description for you to upload on my system. And the next day, they will upload on your system. After the envelope comes, you send another email like, oh, my name is this. Um, this is my uh, credential ID. My envelope, because they, they give you a tracking, num tracking number. So you will see when the envelope arrived. So you will tell them, oh, uh, my envelope arrived yesterday. Uh, if you can upload these documents to my account. And after that, they will send you an email showing like, okay, your education is already complete. You can do the credential evaluation process. When you receive this email, you go back to NCEES account and you will see a button that says, shows like purchase credential evaluations. It's a blue button. You pay $350 with debit card or credit card. And after five to 15 business days, you will receive an answer from NCEES. Okay, great. So they're going to tell you you are equivalent or you're not equivalent. Oh, you're not. If you are equivalent, you can go to the next step of trying to take the exam. If you're not equivalent, they're going to give you some instructions on where you're deficient, what courses you're deficient in. Yes. And then you have the opportunity to, to take those courses in a U.S. college or university or and university. have submitted, correct? Yeah, exactly. So they show like, oh, you have like five missing hours in math or chemistry, whatever they decide. Um, they will send you a list with approved college and universities where you can take this small course, pay the fee, and make the test. And after that, you pay a re-evaluation and they give you the equivalent uh, credential evaluation. Okay. It's a really easy process. It's not complicated. That's great. Okay. So, and again, for those of you that are listening that aren't really familiar with the licensure process in the U.S., let me just explain it for a minute. So in order to get your license in the United States, you need to pass two exams, the FE exam and the PE exam. And you also, in most states, need to get four years of working experience under a licensed professional engineer. Now, in a lot of states, you need to take the FE exam first, work for four years, and then take the PE exam. In some states, you could take the two exams first and then work after. It's not, there isn't a chronological order. 
but you have to do those steps. And what Oscar was describing was just how you can take your education and have it accepted in the U.S. so that you're then able to take the FE exam. Now, once you have the credentials approved, you have to go to the education department or the state board in the specific state where you want to get licensed and then talk to them and apply for the FE exam, which is what Oscar did, I believe, in New York. Yeah, he applied for the FE in New York, in New York Engineering okay. Board. So yeah, you will have a button in your NCWES account. The name of that button is like Send to Board. So you click on that and you you will see a list with all the engineering board, even with Puerto Rico, Virgin Island, Hawaii, I think. And with just one click, you can send the credential evaluation to that board. So you can submit to your state to take the exam through the NCWS portal? That's correct. But you need to create an account through the engineering board that you want to apply. When okay. you create this account, they, they will ask you about, oh, what is your uh, credential ID? from NCEES. So in that right. way, they find your credential evaluation that you sent before do this process. So just to clarify, you have the account with NCEES that you created when you went through your credentialing process. And then if you say you're going to get accredited in New York, you need to create an account with the state board of New York that's in charge of overseeing the FE exam in New York. And then You'll have to kind of connect the two, if you will, so that you can submit through the NCWS dashboard to your New York State for the FE exam. And then if you get accepted for the FE exam, then you'll be able to sit for that exam. You'll be able to take that exam. And should you pass that exam, at least in New York, for example, then you could do your, you can work for four years under a licensed PE and then potentially take the PE exam. Yeah. If you are foreign degree in New York is six years, not four. Okay, six years. Yeah. So that's an important point to make. First of all, not every state is four years experience. Most states are. I think a couple of them are less than that, but most are four. For U.S. Uh, born, U.S. native engineers, if you're out of the country, then you have to check with that state to see you know, how many years it is. So for example, in New York, for me, it was four, but for Oscar, it's six because he came from Venezuela. So that's exactly. an important thing that you need to understand. That's correct. All right. So Oscar's given us a great kind of example of how the entire process will flow for you. If you're a foreign engineer, I want to recap it for everybody. All right. If you went to school in your own country, the first thing you need to do is make sure that that is an acceptable education in the U.S. to get your license. So to figure that out, you register with NCWS and you go through their credentialing process, which means you need to have a copy of your diploma, the transcript from your school, and you need these in both English and your native language. Um, and the description of your courses. The, the three was, the three documents need to be in both languages. Yeah. The three Sorry, documents need to be that. in both yeah. languages. You will submit that to NCWS. They'll give you the go ahead to now you can officially pay. go through the credentialing evaluation. You'll pay. They'll in five to fifteen business days, they'll tell you your education is equivalent or not. If it is, you can go on to check with the state board to try to register for the FE exam. If it's not, they're going to tell you where you're deficient and you can go to a U.S. college or university, make up a couple of hours in those subjects, resubmit, try to get your equivalency. And then again, submit to the state to take the FE exam. And then once you take the FE exam, you'll have to work a certain number of years. You'll have to check with the state board for a foreign engineer in the U.S. how many years of experience you'll need. Once you get those years, you'll be able to apply for the PE exam. And once you pass that, you can then get a professional engineering license. Did I get it, Oscar? Yes, that's correct. Okay, excellent. All right, and the last thing I'm going to say before we go is Oscar has put together a manual and a YouTube channel to help engineers, foreign engineers, go through this process. He now has it in Spanish and a Spanish video. He has an English manual and he's going to be creating the English video. So we'll be working with him to get his information and we'll be able to share it with our audience. But Oscar, I just want to thank you for spending some time with us on Pass the PE Exam and for helping other foreign engineers to try to get their license. Thank you so much for the time. You are very welcome. Thank you for the invitation. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Oscar. It's a tricky process to get this done, but he really took us through the steps and we are grateful for that. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel here. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers pass the PE exam and we want to help you. 
And if you have specific questions, leave them in the chat or comments below this video and we will answer them for you. And we will help you pass the PE exam. I'll see you next week. Thank you.